In this video, I'll be discussing the built-in quantizer in performance mode. To get to the quantizer page, select the menu page and then the quantize page. The bottom half of the screen is dedicated to the scale selection for each of the rows. And this button takes us to a scale editor, or scale builder as I call it. We can assign a different scale to each of the rows and also disable quantization for that row. Oftentimes, when using a row to control a filter cutoff or as a modulation source, it is advantageous to switch off the quantization. Let me just show you the pitch page when the quantization is off. As you can see, the values are no longer shown as note letters and are now displayed as number values. There are only 48 steps available with the touchscreen, so we can set finer divisions with the encoder. There are 20 steps between divisions, which increases the resolution of the slider step size from semitone to 5 cent divisions. The values are shown at the bottom of the screen as we adjust the encoder. I'll let the sequence play so you can hear what it sounds like with no quantization. Now I'll go back to the quantization page and set it to a major scale. When I play the sequence again, you'll hear that it's quantized. There are 12 preset or predefined scales in memory, major, minor, semitone, pentatonic, octave, etc. And also 18 user definable scales, which you can edit with the scale editor. The quantizer allows you to filter the pitches in a sequence in real time, which can be a very powerful tool for defining melodies quickly. If, for example, there is a note in a sequence that sounds out of key, it is a simple matter of filtering that note from the sequence instead of adjusting the sliders. This is great for improvising with a sequencer and will often yield interesting melodies that otherwise may not have occurred during deliberate programming. Editing of the scale is done using the Scale Builder, which is a subpage of the quantization page, selected with the Scale Edit button. Here you can see the keyboard layout where we can edit which notes to include in our scale by tapping on the keys. The scale is updated across the full range of octaves in real time so you can hear immediately the effect. If only one key is selected, then you get octaves on that key. Not only can we change the notes in the scale, but it is possible to change the key center of the scale. For example, if we select D, F, and A notes, we now change the sequence to a D minor from a C major sequence. When we are finished editing the scale, we can give it a name by tapping in the name box, which takes us to the keyboard. And like we did when we named our song, simply type in the name and then touch the text area at the top, which returns us to the scale builder. Return to the quantization page by hitting the back button in the lower left corner of the screen. In the first slot or row, we can now see the newly named scale, and we can set the other rows to that scale if we desire. A couple of points to mention regarding songs and scales. The scales will be saved when hitting the store button and are globally available across all songs but are not saved as part of the song. Only the row assignment of the scale is saved with the song. So it may be best to start with a user scale that is not currently in use if you wish to preserve the song previously created. Preset scales are not available to edit, which is indicated by the no edit text box in the name box in the scale builder. Now I'd like to also cover the performance mode. This is a great feature for on-the-fly switching between sequences. It takes the sequencer out of song mode and allows you to select or solo the sequences manually by tapping on the virtual screen keypad.
When the pad key is in focus or active, you can also dial in a different sequence with the encoder. This is handy for trying out other sequence combinations before finalizing the song arrangement. We can still edit the sequences in the same way we did in previous videos. The benefit here is we can access each sequence individually without waiting for it to come around in a chain song cycle. Also on the performance page, we have another virtual keyboard which allows us to transpose the sequences in real time. The box is on the right side of the screen. Select which of the rows is transposed. We can select any combination of the four rows or none. In order to return to the chain song mode, you have to select the menu and then the song arrangement page. This re-enables the song mode, otherwise the sequencer will continue to play only the active sequence from the performance keypad. If for some reason your song is not playing as you expect, this is often the cause. To re-enable the song mode, exit the performance mode by selecting the song arrangement page from the menu like so. So in this video, we covered the quantization page and editor, and the performance page with transpose feature. In the next video, I will introduce the CV pages and the copy sequence and copy song functions.